In the aftermath of the Second World War, there was widespread recognition that never again should the world experience the atrocities of war. Out of the ashes of two world wars, peace became the goal of international cooperation. The United Nations was created in 1945 in order to maintain international peace and security and to promote cooperation in solving international, economic, social and humanitarian problems. On the approval of the Charter of the United Nations, on the 24th of October 1945, 50 nations signed the United Nations Charter, committing to working together to achieve a peaceful and just world. We celebrate the creation of the United Nations each year on the anniversary of the signing of the Charter in San Francisco, with the 24th of October officially designated United Nations Day. Today, almost every fully recognised independent state is a member state of the UN, with membership currently totalling 193 countries. The opening lines of the Charter, We the Peoples, reminds us that the UN is not just an organisation of governments, but also an organisation for the people of the world. The world has changed since the UN Charter was signed in 1945. We have never been more interconnected. Problems without borders such as climate change, nuclear non-proliferation, the spread of disease and people smuggling, demand governments work together on global solutions. Whether it be bringing world leaders together to commit to reducing extreme poverty by 2015, coordinating the humanitarian relief effort in Haiti following the 2010 earthquake, or monitoring the parliamentary by-elections in Burma in 2012, the UN has never been so needed to deal with the world's most pressing challenges. The UN has been instrumental in providing humanitarian aid to East Africa, where a devastating drought in 2011 and 2012 has caused severe famine and massive displacement of peoples. Conflict in Syria continues to escalate, with more than 10,000 people, mostly civilians, killed, and over 90,000 people being forced to flee to neighbouring countries. The United Nations has been working with the League of Arab States to explore a peaceful political solution to the conflict through the Joint Special Representative for Syria. You can see, all over the world, in unpredictable and challenging environments, the United Nations has played a vital role. This is the very mission of the United Nations, to build a better world, to leave no one behind, and to stand for the poorest and most vulnerable in the name of global peace and social justice. It's frustrating when the United Nations seems unable to solve international conflict, but the UN does so many more important things to improve our daily lives, things that often go unnoticed. The World Health Organisation is helping us to rid the world of terrible disease such as polio, TB, malaria and HIV AIDS. And were we ever to face the horror of a global pandemic, the World Health Organisation would be the forefront of our response. The plight of millions of refugees around the world is eased daily by the tireless efforts of the UN High Commissioner for Refugees to provide care, protection and support. Without the UNHCR, few would have much hope of a better life. The International Civil Aviation Organisation ensures that each day thousands of travellers around the world complete their flights in a safe and orderly way. And there is so much more that the UN does that we take for granted. If we didn't have the UN, we'd have to invent it, and that would be no easy thing in the 21st century. So we need to get behind the UN, its ideas and its values, and try to make the world a better place. Australia's recent election to the Security Council provides us with an exciting and tremendously important opportunity. More than any time in its history, the Council is more actively engaged in meeting the challenges of regional and global security. During Australia's two-year term on the Council, 
we'll have to deal with a large number of issues directly affecting our national interests. Afghanistan, East Timor, Bougainville and the Solomon Islands are among them, and no doubt there'll be many others. As a founding member of the UN, and as one of the first countries to contribute to its peacekeeping activities, Australia has a strong interest in enhancing the Security Council's capacity to be more effective. With our election to the Council, we'll have a great opportunity to pursue this goal and to work with the international community to build a safer and more secure world. Partnering with UN organisations and agencies is a key strategy for the effective delivery of Australia's aid program and for realising the Millennium Development Goals. We work with a broad range of UN development and humanitarian organisations, including UNDP, UNICEF, UN Women, the World Health Organisation and the World Food Programme. Delivering aid through UN agencies enables Australia to benefit from their specialist expertise and to extend our reach and impact. In the past two years, Australia's support has helped the World Food Programme to feed more than 5.5 million hungry people. And last year, we helped UNICEF to vaccinate 10 million children against measles. There are over 100 UN associations around the world that serve to link the people to the work of the UN. It's important that everybody around the world supports the UN because the UN will only be as strong as the commitment of the 193 countries who are members. The commitment of these countries will only be as strong as the resolve of their citizens, people like you and me. In Australia, the UN Association works to inform all Australians about the work of the UN through public events, film nights, fundraisers and publications. The UNAA also has an active UN academic network, a young professionals network and an amazing youth organisation, UN Youth Australia, who run model UN conferences in high schools and universities across the country. You can support the UN by becoming a member of the UNAA and getting involved in our work.